everyone and welcome to We Belong Presents, a Career Australia Season 2, where we talk to industry experts and professionals from various fields because here we are on a mission to decode and understand the current happenings in the market with regards to opportunities for students and job seekers alike. On today's episode, I have a very special guest and I'm so honoured to have him on our show, Mr. Gaurav Gore, the Managing Director and Founder of Stepping Stones Career Solutions, also a Mara agent. Thank you so much for joining us and giving your time. Thank you for inviting me and I'm very happy to be here, to be associated with M4TV. I have seen that you are doing great stuff and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation and agreeing to be on my show. Thank you so much Thank again. So, much. Um, so Gaurav, you are from Stepping Stones. You founded a whole career solutions uh, <laughs> agency for people, uh, for yes. students, helping so many out there from India, from different countries. Um, but I also know that you also migrated as a student yes. to Australia, right? Yes. Can you please throw in some light of how how your journey looked like and what were the obstacles, the hurdles, mm. the good part of your journey? Yes. Um, because a lot of uh, them want to know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I came to Australia in 2007 to study Masters of Finance. Mm. I did my studies from University of Melbourne. So like a lot of students at that time, uh, the rules were different, the things were different at that time. Yeah. So when I came here, I had no intention of settling here. I picked a course which I later found out does not lead to permanent residency. Ah, okay. So I was studying Master of Finance yeah. and uh, I finished my course. I yeah. had full intention of going back. Then luckily I got a job in my field yeah. as an equity researcher, okay. as an analyst. So I was like, oh, I need to stay here. Yeah. So then I started looking that how do I stay here? Yeah. And then I found a pathway at that time. Luckily, it was not very difficult to get a permanent mm. residency. Okay. So I got my degree assessed as an accountant. Yeah. Uh, it was a different point system, got an invitation. And that time it was very quick to get a PR if you score well in IELTS. So, um, if I can cut you, yes. sorry, but which year was this? So I graduated at the peak of global financial crisis, uh -huh. uh, 2009. Okay. All right, so it's a two-year degree, so yeah. it finished in 2009. Yeah. Uh, we've, I was only one of the two people who got placed from the university directly, okay. so got lucky in that regard. Interesting. So, uh, did the IELTS at that time, if you do well in IELTS, mm. you, you can instantly apply PR. Okay. So, I actually got my PR in five days. Woo! <laughs> Back in people are waiting for five years here. <laughs> Back in 2009. Okay. And... Uh, I worked as an analyst for six years. Then I got really sick of sitting behind computer yeah. making research reports. So did a yeah. law course and became a registered migration agent and open stepping stones career solutions. I am so glad <laughs> your field diverted from yeah. absolute IT, uh, proper IT to no, finance. Finance, finance, finance yes. right? Finance to migration. Yes. And I'm so glad you are here I, as a guest. I'm actually very glad because this one is much more fulfilling. Yeah. Talking to people directly, yeah. uh, see if you can help them. Yeah. And when, whenever somebody, one of our clients, get the permanent visa, yeah. the happiness that you get out of it definitely is a different level altogether. Especially definitely. in these days where the journey is such a long journey. Yeah. It's a very hard journey. Yeah. And you become really close to your clients, and when they succeed, you feel really happy. Yeah. So it is. It is a very fulfilling career. Yeah. No, but I always say that. Nursing is a very fulfilling job, but yes. after talking to you yeah. with what you mentioned, I yes. think even migration and helping people get yes. their visas is such a fulfilling service, isn't it? It is. Amazing. Uh, nursing is a very fulfilling job, no doubt about it. Yeah. But every profession, like be it a teaching, be it a migration, it has got its own perks, right? So one of the perks for me personally is when our clients succeed, they get a permanent visa. Amazing. And that's that's what we try to help take them from student visa to permanent visa yeah. to citizenship. Yeah. You know? totally. So it is it is really fulfilling. Amazing. And when they come to your office, they have a sweet box. Oh, a box sweet. Of sweets. <laughs> it is. It is beautiful, really good. Yeah. beautiful. Beautiful. Um, thank you. Thank you for letting us know how your journey looked mm -hmm. like in a gist. But but I know so many of my friends and extended family who yeah. have absolutely no idea or hmm. plan when they migrate to a developed country like Australia in order yeah. to settle here. Yeah. So what they all want is they want to study, they hmm. want to get their degree, go back home and work there. 
Yeah. But in that course of two years of being in Australia, hmm. uh, the reasons are innumerable for them to fall in love with the country. It can yes. be the amenities, it can be the facilities, it can be the opportunities hmm. or general acceptance yes. of themselves in life, yes. right? Now, they don't know how they want to settle here hmm. and how they have to settle here rather. Yeah. So tell me, how can a student migrating to Australia from a developing country hmm. make that two years hmm. as effective as possible for yeah. or form a base in order to get a PR? Yeah. So permanent visas have become quite difficult yeah. in the last few years. Yes. It didn't used to be this difficult, but lately it has become difficult. Mm. So when you're a new student coming into the country, right? Yeah. You're just very happy you got a student visa. You're very happy coming here just starting your studies. Yeah. And then you get so busy with your study life that you don't think about the future. Totally. You know, what's going to happen after that. Totally. So oftentimes what happens is that what you are studying is not good for migration. Okay. So your career and migration pathways diverge. Totally. Right? Yeah. If you are by chance happen to be studying something that's good for migration, that's excellent. Yeah. Right? But if you're in a course that does not lead to PR, yeah. then you need to think about it, right? right? Not necessarily you need to change the course. You can always do a second course side by side. Okay. Right? Okay. Or if you want to change the course, you can change the course as well. Right. So Australia migration student visa allows people to change the courses, mm. right? At the same level. So if you're doing and the master- And getting the same credit points, transferring the same credit points if I'm not wrong. Not always. Okay. If you're doing, so if you're doing MBA, yeah. Masters of Business Administration, yeah. that does not give you PR, right. right? And you find out, oh, six months of MBA has gone. I need to study something that gives me a PR, let's say Masters of IT. Yeah. Then you shift from there. Okay. But these courses are not related. Mm. So you will not get a credit transfer. Okay. So you start again. Okay. Okay. But it's up to the student mm. to find out the course that you're doing. Yeah. Gives you PR or not. That's step one. Step one. Right? Okay. So that's the first thing. So Australia has got a list of occupations. It is called MLT SSL list. Medium to long term Sorry, what list. Is it? <laughs> Medium to long term list. Okay. So, Medium to long term list. Yeah. Okay. MLT SSL list. Okay. Skill shortage list. Okay. Medium to long term skill shortage list. Okay. So that is the list that has got the occupations that are in demand in Australia. Okay. And they can apply for direct PR uh -huh. through that if your occupation falls under that list. Oh, yeah, right. So now the first thing is you need to see that where your occupation falls. Right. 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 So if you are doing masters of IT with major in software engineering for example yeah, yeah so you'll become a software engineer correct so you need to see where the software engineers falls under that list right which it does right so if it does all good you okay. don't need to do anything software engineers. <laughs> <laughs> so there it's a long list so there are a lot of occupations yeah. in that right good job. Uh, if you're doing something that does not lead to like. PR, journalism, yeah. right? It's yeah. not in that list, unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you need to see, okay, it's not in the list. Mm. Is there another way? In which list does it fall? Yeah. So there are actually three lists. Oh, okay. MLT SSL list, okay. medium to long term list, yeah. STSL list, short term list, okay. and ROL list, the regional list. Okay. Okay, you need to see the, where this occupation falls. If your occupation is not in the MLT SSL list, mm. It is in the STSL list, for example. Short term list. Short term. You can still get a PR, mm. but you need to go to a state that yeah. has that occupation in their list. Right. So with the STSL list, if your occupation is there, right. you will either get a subclass 190 visa okay. or a 491 visa, right. which is a regional visa right. through which you can get a permanent residency. Okay. So mostly you need to see, okay, I'm in Victoria. My occupation falls in STSL list. Right it's not in the Victoria state list. Right. Though, so it means that probably I have to change my field of study mm. or I need to change my state. Correct. Go and study in a state that has that occupation in the list. On their list. Okay. Yeah. So when you're on a student visa, that's the first thing to check. Right. You, there are a lot of migration agents who can help you with that. Right. Uh, go to them. You can do your own research. Mm -hmm, the lists mm -hmm. are publicly available mm -hmm. and you see that, okay, this is the criteria. Right. So if on a student visa, you yeah. do this one thing that will make your life easier. Going easier. Forward. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now there are people who are like, I know this is not in my occupation list. Uh, it's not in the PR list, but I really like the course I'm doing. Yeah. 
and I really like the place where I'm staying. Right. I don't want to change. Sure. So there's always an option of doing a second course side by side that is in the PR list. Right. You cannot leave your primary course at yeah. a master's level, but you can always do a second short course okay. that can lead to PR. Okay. So, um, and this course doesn't necessarily need to be of the course that they are actually studying. Yes. Currently. It can be a different course. Different course. So yeah. you can actually do two things side okay. by side. Okay. Uh, but you can't leave the primary course like that. Okay. Yeah. You can't fair. suddenly leave master's and start doing a diploma level course, for fair, example. Fair enough. Because it breaches the student visa conditions. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. Uh, and if your occupation is in the PR list. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you do then? Okay. Yeah. You have checked that, okay, I'm doing IT, software is in demand, yeah. I'm good, yeah. what do I do now? Yeah. Lastly, in last three years, I would say, yeah. the PR has been linked to jobs. Okay. If you are working in your nominated occupation, right. it's relatively easier to get a visa. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's so interesting. If you are an IT professional, if you are doing nursing, if you are doing engineering, yeah. Yeah. try to find internships. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those unpaid internships, if they lead to jobs, yeah. can help you a lot. Fair. Right? Yeah. So that's what I would suggest. If you're doing courses that are in the PR list, you are liking the course, try to find employment Great. in that field. field. Right? Like internships. Internships, or, whatever it is, you have got career workshops, a lot of universities have a lot of resources. Yeah. Totally. So take use of those resources. Yeah. yeah. Right? Go yeah. for internships, do do project work, whatever, to yes. make your chances better to find a job. Mm -hmm. Because again, I would say, PR has been linked to job yeah. in the last two to three years. Three years. And yeah. finding your first job in your field is so critical. Critical. No. It's, it's really very, critical. Very, very significant, honestly. Because what happens is if you're graduated yeah. and you don't find work in your field, statistically speaking, yeah. it is huge barrier mm. to enter your career yeah. after two years of graduation. Fair enough. Because employers say, oh, you're not a graduate. What have you done after graduation? Yeah, yeah. I was driving taxi, I was doing security, <laughs> you know. So that first job is very important. Yes. So to improve your chances of getting that first job, do internships, career workshops, things like that. Sure. So first step is to see if your course is on the list. Yes. A medium to short, sorry, medium to, to long, long term, term list. medium to long term, short term, regional. Yes. Right. So please check if your course is on that list. And second thing is, apply for internships, get industry experience, yes. unpaid, paid, absolutely anything, contract jobs. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> Any experience Any is experience. experience is good experience. Especially with IT people, I tell them that, you know, make a portfolio of the work you have done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And employers give more cre uh, credibility to those things. Yeah. Those things are more important. You know, what work you have done. If you can just show that work, totally. it's easier to get a job. Totally. Right? Totally. So, Things like that. And universities actually have a lot of resources which right. students don't use. Mm. So go and explore that. Yeah, like? Like they have a careers department, right? Yes. They do seminars, they do presentations. Yes. Uh, they help with internships. Right? A few certification, certification courses as well. Yeah. So few, yeah. Uh, universities don't run certification, but you can do go and do it on your own. Yeah, right? sure, sure. So try to see that what are employers looking for and mm. try to build up your resume in those things. Definitely. Um, I'm so glad that we actually know the steps in order <laughs> yes. to, you know, form that base for yes. PR. Thanks for that. But the next question directly comes to w the visa that comes after student visa. Yes. From any country, mm -hmm. a student needs to have subclass 485 yes. slash temporary residence yes. slash graduate visa, yes. right? Um, now, this is a very critical phase mm -hmm. because um, a lot of students are working part-time mm -hmm. uh, in a supermarket or a restaurant or something or doing Uber or something else completely. Mm -hmm. And during this time, they need to manage finances. Yes. They need to find a job. Yes. Uh, everything starts from, you know, like the, I would not want to call it the face of struggle, mm -hmm. but even if I don't want to call it, hmm. it is that. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows that, right? Yes. Um, yes. People who know high fi hmm. But tell me, how can these two years or now three hmm. years, because hmm. people who have uh, graduated during the pandemic have a three year graduate visa. Yeah. Um, now, during this time, tell me, how can they make this phase as efficient as possible in order to have a strong pathway 
yes. for permanent residents. So there are actually two kinds of 485 visas. Right. Depends what level of study you have done. Okay. okay? If you have done any bachelor's, you have done any master's, yeah. you are eligible to apply this visa. Okay. okay. If you have done master's, you get a three-year visa. Right. If you have done bachelor's, you get a two-year visa. Two-year visa. But okay. the things are different if you have done diploma. Okay. Right now, as per rules, yeah. not all diplomas lead to 485 visa. Okay. 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 There are certain diplomas that lead to 485. There are certain that don't. Okay. We are doing this in April. The rules might change in July and all diploma holders might be able to get that 485. Oh, interesting. But right now, as we sit here, yeah. not all the diploma holders are eligible for 485. Mm. So again, I'll refer to the list, MLT SSL list. Yes. If you are a diploma holder and your occupation falls under that MLT SSL list, right. you are eligible to apply 485. Okay. Okay. So the popular occupations uh, for diploma, mm. chef, motor mechanic, painter, mm -hmm. carpenter, welder, they are all in the MLT SSL list. Medium to long term. Medium list. to long term list. So if you have done these courses, you will be eligible to apply 485. Okay. In order to apply 485, yeah. you need 360 hours of paid experience in your oh. nominated occupation. All right. What I mean by that is during the two year of studies, if you're starting to become a chef, yeah. you need a 360 hours of paid, paid experience. Work in order to be eligible to apply 485 visa. Okay, okay. That, that's where the problem comes in. Yeah. Because many people, students, they are busy working in other fields. Totally. Either they don't get that experience yeah. or they don't try to get that experience. Now, many colleges have modified their course yeah. that they have included the 360 hours as part of the curriculum. Okay, good. in the name of placements, if I'm not wrong. Yes, yeah, so it's called work placements. So it is in sort of an unpaid internship, but yeah. it's part of the curriculum. Curriculum. And if it is part of the curriculum, that 360 hours of experience you have done as a course, mm -hmm. that makes you eligible for 485. Okay. But you need Fair. to check with your college whether that thing is in the structure or not. Like the work placement yes. structure is included in yes. the course structure or not. Yes. Yeah. And uh, in last two years during pandemic, more and more colleges have tried to include it as part of the course. Yeah because students were really struggling to find work. So it is happening slowly, but not all the colleges have it. Yeah. yeah so if totally. you are in a college, you need to check whether, you know, after doing this placement, I am eligible for 485 or not. Yes. Because if your college does not have that, you need to go out and find that experience. Totally. And when you find it, it has to be paid. Ah, right. So right. it's a different set of rule for 485 visa holders. Yes. Uh, if you have done bachelor's or master's or if you have done diploma. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but this is how they can make that phase yes. efficient yes. and strong. And that is another thing you should know during your student visa phase, yes. whether I'm eligible for 485 or not. Ah, okay. right. right. So right. that's what the thing is. Uh, there are a lot of small, small things in 485 visas that you need to have a certain level of IELTS score. Totally. Six overall, five minimum. Yes. Right. Oh, six overall, five right. minimum. So it has got six four overall, modules. <laughs> it has got four modules: reading, listening, writing, speaking. Yes. So you need five minimum, and six overall, and equivalent score in PT. Okay. okay. Yes. So that's what you need. Uh, your test score should not be more than three years old. Mm. So many times people who are coming for masters, yes, the same IELTS score they have used for masters can be used for TR. Yeah. But people right. who come for bachelors, their yeah. scores have mostly expired. Yes. So they need to do it again. Definitely. So you need to make sure your IELTS score is valid. Mm. Right? Totally, totally. You need to finish your degree on time. Yes. So normally when you get a student visa, immigration gives you a student visa with the end date of the degree plus two months. Okay. So you usually have few months of extra visa to do all these processes. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you go from a student visa to a TR visa. TR. And but shouldn't be a problem if uh, all of these are followed properly, right? No, there should not be a yeah. problem. So when you apply for a student visa, mm -hmm. there's a criteria called GT, Genuine Temporary Entrant right. Criteria. Right. So you write a lengthy SOP, Statement yes. of Purpose, yes. explaining yes. that, you know, I want to come here, I want to study this, this, is I, do. this, this, this I want to do when I go back, totally. you know, things like that. Yeah. 485 visa does not have that criteria. Okay. So yes. as long as you're fulfilling the requirements of the visa, uh -huh. it's good. You will get it. Great. 100%. Great. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, do, so that's the story with the 485 visa. That's 485 for all of you yes. and for me. <laughs> yes. um, 
So, Gaurav, whenever someone's hmm. migrating from a developing country like uh, an India or Indonesia or Pakistan to a yes. developed country like Australia, yes, there is this very very basic tendency of converting uh, AUD to INR all yes. the time. Even when you know buying as simple as going to a supermarket or buying uh, something as small as a chocolate, yes. right? I am telling you this because I have done it, right? <laughs> yes. uh, and I'm sure so many of them yes. out there would relate to what I'm saying yes. because we all do it, yes. right? Now, when a student is actually having so many thoughts before mm. getting something as small as that, mm. now I can imagine how much thought would getting a PR mm. and the cost involved mm. in getting a PR, uh, you know, takes yes. right so tell me how is that aspect of a pr and getting a pr looking like the cost involved the monetary and this is a major concern all of us have yes. so please throw in some light in okay. the cost involved in getting a pr see to get to the cost part yeah. you need to understand the steps that are involved totally right? because uh, different occupations have got a sort of a different pathway to PR, yes, right? Yes. So broadly speaking, there are three steps okay. to PR. Okay. Skill assessment, uh -huh. expression of interest, yes. and that includes a state nomination, regional nomination. And then the third step is applying the visa. Okay. 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 So skill assessment, different occupations have got different bodies. Okay. Organ overseeing bodies that do the skill assessment. Right. Accountants is done by CPA, CA, okay. right? Okay. IT is done by ACS. Okay. Engineers, Engineering Australia, Nursing done by ANMAC, APRA, right? Mm -hmm. right? So different bodies have got different processes and different costs as well. Okay. 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 Uh, so for most of the most of the occupations, you pay a one-time fee, they do the skill assessment and that's done. it. Okay. Uh, some occupation, some organizing bodies like uh, overseeing bodies like Vetasis mm -hmm. that does a large number of occupations, mm -hmm. they charge like thousand dollars. Okay. And if you want to fast track, they charge another six hundred sixty on top, and they are one of the more expensive ones. Okay. Some right. somebody like us ACS that right. does IT occupation, they charge five hundred dollars. Right. CPA charges five twenty dollars. Right. So depends which occupation you are in. Yes. Which organizing uh, overseeing body you are going to? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for diploma holders, it's unfortunately more expensive. Uh -huh, uh huh. Okay. For diploma holders, they need to do a thing called job ready program. Okay. And people who are doing diploma, they would know about it. Yeah. So job ready program is basically one year of work experience. Okay. And during that, you have to submit your pay slips. You have to book your test. Right. So it takes about one year, and it costs around like three, four thousand dollars. Oh, okay. So. They charge a lot of money to come yeah. and take the test. So uh, it is more expensive. Uh, so it depends which occupation you yes. are in. Yes. Anyways, but the first step is skill assessment. Skill assessment. Once you've done the skill assessment, you get to expression of interest. Okay. So now the expression of interest right. is free of cost. Oh, okay, sweet. You just go on the skill select website, you fill out the form. Okay. And that's your expression of interest. Great. If you're doing nomination, yeah. So every state has got a different process of nomination. Totally. And they have got different pricing as well. Yes. Okay. So Victoria does not charge anything, mm -hmm. right? If you go and do the regional nominations from New South Wales, they charge eight hundred eighty dollars. Oh, okay. So it depends how many applications you're doing. Okay. Which state you're in. Right. And right. then we come to the visa part after that. Totally. Visa costs around four thousand three hundred, four thousand six hundred dollars. Okay. And then if you have an agent, they have their fees on top. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, who's managing all the process? Totally. Overall, I would say, depending on what occupation you are, yeah. it should not cost you for a single applicant more than thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars over the whole process. Yes, right. Which is like so many things, right? Yes. Like skill assessment, expression of interest, yes. uh, agent fees. Yes. Yeah, all of it, all yeah. of it. And right. I'm not including like some people do professional year. I'm not including yes. the cost of professional year yes. in that. Yes. Yes. Uh, for IT people, they do professionally in order yeah. to get skill assessment. Yeah, and one year of uh, getting that yes. professional. Yes, so it's about year. a 10, yes. 11 month process. Uh, yeah. I'm not including the cost of that, yeah. but just the skill assessment EOI visa, it should fall under that bracket of 10 to 14,000 dollars. 10 to 14,000. Depending on what you're doing yeah. and yeah. including agent fees. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So 
if you have a family members then obviously you have to pay their fees as well yeah so it becomes a bit more expensive but broadly it should fall under that bracket yeah not to book any flaws uh, or to you know like okay. comment on oh it's just so much money <laughs> or oh my god it's not money at all i don't yeah. want to say that because <laughs> because i don't know the audience that's watching uh, yes. our show are from different backgrounds yes. different cultures different yes. financial yes. Uh, backgrounds so it's up to you yeah. to judge if it's expensive or if it's yeah, not like, expensive or it's looking great for you <laughs> because so, 40 percent 50 percent is just the visa fees yes right? because the visa fees is so expensive yeah that's why the cost is that high yes if the visa fees is thousand dollars or two thousand dollars which it is for canada for example okay okay then it won't be that expensive right, right, right. but uh, here australia actually has got very high visa fees makes sense partner visa for example is one of the most expensive partner visas in the world oh okay the visa fees by itself is eight thousand dollars Oh, okay. in order to apply. <laughs> yeah, just the oh, application. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of money. Government <laughs> charges eight thousand dollars, okay. and then they take two years to process the visa. Yes. So yeah, yes. so Australian visa fees are quite expensive. Quite expensive, <laughs> right? Um, now, Gaurav, now that you've explained me so much about you know getting PR and the money involved, can you also help me with the time frame once Ooh. all of this is done? Yeah. A tentative one. Okay. See the time frame again. Skill assessment, most of the people are across that process. Right? Okay. Many of the occupations, after their studies, they need to do something else yeah. to get a skill assessment done. Okay. For example, diploma holders. Right. Your trade courses. You right. need to do a one year of job ready program. Okay. So you add one year to the process. Right. IT people, they need one year of job or PY. PY. That yes. adds the time. Professional year. Yeah. yeah. Engineers, they can straight away apply the skill assessment. So they don't they get immediately done. <laughs> nursing, <laughs> nursing you can apply immediately right teaching you can apply immediately okay. so there are occupations if you're in an occupation that where you can immediately apply PR it's quicker you save that one year period but if you need to do something yeah you add one year okay. right yeah so once you're done with the skill assessment you get to the EUI part nomination part yeah EUI is easy to do expression you, of interest expression of interest so you build up your points you apply EUI yes right? Uh, if you have built up your points during that your student visa phase, uh -huh. you know, you have done your PT exams, you have done your NATI exams, right? You have built up your points. Yeah. You can apply immediately as soon as you have a skill assessment. Skill assessment, right. Unfortunately, what was happening, 189 visa uh -huh. was not coming. Okay. Okay. Only the state nominated visas were coming. Right. 190 or 491 visas. Right. In order to be eligible for state nomination visas, mm -hmm. again, you have got different states, different rules. Yeah. Some states have got a rule that, okay, if you have a job today, apply tomorrow. Okay. Which state is this? Victoria. Victoria. Yay. But Victoria has got lots of other problems. Oh, okay. I'll not get into that. We don't have time for it. All right. Um, <laughs> um, uh, another episode, okay. definitely. So some states have got like, you know, you have a job today, you apply tomorrow. Mm. Some states have got, you come to our state, you work in your nominated occupation for six months, for 12 months different then you apply so yeah. that adds to your time frame mm, okay right. so once you have met that state nomination requirement you yeah. put in your nomination yes they take roughly one two months to process okay let's say you get their invitation okay sweet you apply the visa you get 60 days to lodge the visa yeah you lodge the visa and then you're sitting and waiting for immigration to open your file Right. Now, immigration has been very, very slow in processing the visa application during pandemic. Yes. So the files that usually used to take three months, six months, are taking one year, two years. Oh, okay. And the yeah. students are sticking limbo between. Right? Yes. What do we do? And that has been really, really unfortunate part of this pandemic. Hopefully, with the pandemic being over, uh, we have started more files being opened yeah. and the processing times will become shorter. Yes. So if you're talking about the whole process, the day you have graduated from the day you get the visa, it can include all these things. Right. 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 And it can be a two year process. It can be a four year process, okay. depending upon a lot of other things that are part right. of it. A lot of aspects. So it's not, it's not like a set thing. Right. Like you, can, you know, but I would say if you are lucky, yeah. if you're good, after studies, minimum one year period mm -hmm. to anywhere can be four year period oh, yes. if everything goes well. Well, I regularly get clients, uh, consultations coming in who have been here for 10 years ah. and something has gone with their migration path. Still pathway. waiting. Still waiting or something has gone wrong. Right. They've gone on the wrong path, mm. right? They had a visa refusal. So that's the thing with the migration. 
if the things go wrong, it's very, very difficult to get it back on track. Right. And it's very, very expensive to get it back on track. Right. So that's why if you're on a student visa, right. you need to know these things, right? So that yeah. you can pick your path. Right. Totally. Because migration, unfortunately, is like that. It is if like it, that. If everything's going well, everything's going well. Yeah. And what happens is when you come to Australia, you're usually very young, right? Nothing major has gone wrong in your life. <laughs> so you don't even think about it that this can happen to me. <laughs> you don't even think about it because you are just like, you know, 22, 23, 21. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have stayed at home, most of the people. You have, you have had a sheltered life. Totally. So suddenly you are in a new country. Yes. There are a lot of things coming. You get lost sometimes in yes. the experience. Totally. Uh, you can't even imagine something wrong ha happening. Especially when we come from uh, countries like India, Indonesia, yeah. from a South Asian yes. background, everything is, you know, like... Yeah. You have had a sheltered life, yes, right? Yes, totally, totally. And totally. I had the same experience, like yeah. you had a sheltered life. Yeah. And then you come into a new country yeah. and you're supposed to manage everything. Everything, absolutely. And especially with the migration, if everything goes well, it's excellent. Great. Yes. If it does not go well, That's it can trouble. go very wrong. So. Now, this is where we uh, bring in migration agents, right? Yes. Uh, who can actually uh, help the students, who can mm. help people wanting to seek jobs in the country yes. to get them right on track. Yes. What do you say? What do you have to That's say? That's a great that? thing that you yes. actually you're doing. Yeah. And I hope more people get this information yeah. uh, so that they are aware of the things that they need to do yes. and to prepare in advance. Right. 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 If you have come with a mindset, okay, I'm going to stay here. Uh, I'm going to get a TR, I'm going to get good experience and go back. Right. Excellent. Right? What do you do at uh, Career uh, Stepping Stones Career Solutions? Like, so what do you are, exactly help? How do you help So them? we are an education and migration agency. Right. Our business is sort of 50-50% split between yeah. the student visas yeah. and the other visas. Okay. So we take the students all the way from student visa to temporary visa to permanent visas. We do a lot of partner visas, employer sponsored visas, Sweet. citizenships. Uh, we do and go and fight cases in the tribunals. Great. People who have got the visa cancelled or visa refused. Nice. So we have a good team of people yeah. who specialize in different areas Great. of migration law. Great. And yeah, that's what we do. That's good. I'm yeah. sure whatever you're doing, it's absolutely wonderful. Helping people to get a permanent residence visa, helping them during their TR. Thank yes. you for doing it again. Thank you so much. Uh, so Stepping Stones Career Solutions. <laughs> Uh, now that you've given us so much information uh, that's so valuable, your time. I always reiterate, time is so valuable. Thank you so much for giving us your time and helping so many out there uh, dreaming of wanting to be in a country like Australia, getting a PR in Australia. Thank you so much again. And Stepping Stones Career Solutions, it is that you have to uh, check. You have your website. Do you yes. want to talk about that? Yeah, our offices are based in Melbourne CBD, level 13, 200 Queen Street. Uh, website is www.sscs.com.au. Yeah. We have presence on Facebook, on TikTok. We put videos there. Yeah. Uh, go have a look. Go. <laughs> I like using whiteboard to explain the the stuff. Uh, so yeah, I hope you go and check it out. And if it's helpful, then yeah, definitely it's good. Uh, thank you so much again. And I am hoping that uh, we can do many more episodes with a lot of information. Thanks again. Yeah. Um, so that was Mr. Gaurav Gaur from uh, Stepping Stones Career Solutions. I hope this episode was beneficial for you. I will meet you with another episode with another guest uh, next week. Until then, it's time for me to say bye. I will catch up with another episode next week. Until then, this is Sapna signing off. Adios, amigos.